Joelle Sleebus here. Thank you for joining me for another short tutorial. This tutorial is going to be about Shishasana, headstands. Now, first of all, headstands doesn't really seem to be the right word because you're not standing on your head. You're actually standing on your arms and there's hardly any weight. We actually will try that exercise where we'll, we'll try to lift our head off the floor. So you can do a headstands without standing on your head. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll show you some variations. One thing that is very important is that we do not jump. We do not jump into headstands. We can jump into handstands. And the reason is because your neck is a, is a sensitive part of your body. And if you have weight on your head and you start to jump, you can actually potentially hurt yourself. So work with this tutorial only if you feel confident. We'll build it up nicely. Let's focus first on step number one, which is finding our balance, finding our shishasana, finding our center line in our core connection. I call it the little egg. The important thing is that you forget about extending the legs up to the sky. I know we have that image in our head, oh, the legs need to be up. Let's go for the little egg and let's hold the little egg and just play with that space to start off with. So, to measure a safe distance, hold on to the elbows. Or actually wrap the hands, you can even hold on to your own biceps. Why do we do that? So the elbows are the same width as your shoulders. And then you interlace your hands. And as I said before, we're going to be putting pressure on our arms. We're going to be resisting the floor, grounding to the, through the arms to find some elevation and core connection. And you can imagine that if you have your hands interlaced like this, and you put pressure, that little pinky finger is not going to be very happy. So the little pinky finger is actually going to come on the inside. So you have a flat surface to put your weight on. So let's do that on the mat. Same steps. I've been doing them for years and years and years. And every time I go into headstands, I do them again. So let's find that bit of routine so we are safe and confident. Hold on to the bicep, elbows are as wide as the shoulders, interlace the hands, little pinky finger, let's make that one safe, and then squeeze the palms together as if there's a little tennis ball in between your hands. Now we're going to place the crown of the head on the floor. Do you know where the crown is exactly? It's quite, you know, quite interesting to realize where it is. There is a trick for that too. It's funny. Open the hand, bring the thumb to your third eye, and now your pinky finger is going to reach, and that's the crown of the head. So maybe press into it, a little bit of a little cross there, so you know that that's the crown of the head. Same steps. Off we go. We are going for our little egg, biceps, elbows, hands, pinky finger, Crown of the head comes very close to the hands, and this is your little head. You walk your feet close. Press into the arms, maybe even lift the head for a second. Your knees stay really close into your chest, and you lift your heels close to the bottom. This is your little head. Hold it here. Practice this for a long time. Practice this, practice this. Yeah, maybe squeeze the knees together, toes are active. You can start lifting the legs up to the sky. Fabulous. Let's test if we can lift our head. So you press into the arms and you lift your head a couple of times. If you want to be able to hold your shishasana for longer periods of time, it's really, really, really good to be able to just test that the weight is on the arms and the shoulders. A really cool variation is to come to a 90 degrees or even bring the toes to the floor. Lots of cool connection here. 
You can choose to do this with your feet flexed or pointed. Let's flex the feet and feel the core connection. And then slowly, slowly, slowly does it. Slowly does it. Bring them lower. Yes. Notice how you have to subtly readjust your pelvis. It feels more like a back bend almost. Yeah, you can point your toes. Can you bring your toes just to hover above the floor? Ooh la la. You can see them active toes and then bring them back up towards the sky. Last variation, which I really enjoy, is a twist. So you can twist here. Let's first twist our knees over to the left side. To the left, 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 to the left. Good. When the knees are twisted to the left, your right leg can come all the way down in front of your face and the left leg goes behind you. Oh, there's a wall there. You can feel the heart. So I'm going to stop here, but you can play around with that. And then bring the legs back up to the to the sky, find your center line, test, lift your head on the floor, yeah, still in control, knees over to the right, to the right, to the right, slowly, slowly, slowly does it, wobbling, wobbling, refining your center, and then splitting the legs, good, I can't split them all the way, otherwise I'm going to kick my heart on the wall, see where you can go, activate those toes, twist even a little more, with the, yeah, with the power of the legs. Legs back up, with control, slowly, maybe descend. Keep your toes pointed, keep them pointed, keep them pointed, keep them pointed. After our inversion, coming to a child's pose, I'm gonna take an embryo variation. Hands next to the feet, relax your shoulders, breathe. Shake us off now with your head just to check if your neck is still okay. If you took the right decisions, because we're here to heal, we're here to connect. Amazing. Slowly roll up. Thank you for joining me once again. If there's anything you'd like me to break down, a transition, a specific pose, feel free to message me on my Instagram account. And then uh, next time I'll include that as well. Keep trying, keep practicing, keep breathing, keep smiling. Namaste.